You're listening to Tour Tech, your five weekly takeaways to tourism success. This series is brought to you by the Digital Tourism Think Tank in partnership with the European project Torbit, which is co-financed by the European Commission's Cosme program for SMEs. I'm Nick Hall, founder of the Digital Tourism Think Tank, joined by our series co-host, Marie Texier, looking after Torbit for Paris & Co. And each week, we'll be bringing you insightful discussions with tourism SMEs undergoing digital transformation together with the innovative tech partners who are guiding them on that journey. There's no doubt about it. The pandemic changed how visitors behave and what they seek when visiting new destinations. For all the change and challenges, there was also significant innovation as a result of the pandemic, one of which was the need for low touch and contactless experiences. In today's episode, we'll hear more about how such solutions are today being adapted for new industry needs. We're back in Iceland, where we'll be meeting with Alda Hedur Osk Gudmund Dottir, also known as Alla. She is the co-founder of Proactive Iceland, and her focus is on finding new ways to enhance operations for greater efficiency and productivity. We'll also meet with Friedrich Arnason, who runs the hotel Breidasvik in the east of Iceland, who has for the last 15 years built up tourism services in the village where he is based. He loves nothing more than seeing guests leave happy and very grateful for the experience that he offers them. The digitalization journey is not always easy and sometimes you can have challenges, you don't find the right partners. And in this discussion, they will share with us the upside down, but also their advice from their experience for us to avoid doing the same mistakes or maybe to detect what we could do to be on the top on our digitalization journey. Great, well, let's have a listen. So my name is Alan Herosko Mistotir, but my nickname is Alla. It's much easier for everyone. It's a complicated name. So I'm a consultant for a company called Proactive Iceland. I've been in tourism since 2008, so it's about 16 years now. And I started working in London as a product manager for a train line, but I've got a bachelor's degree in business administration. And then I've got a master's degree in business development. And as like a teenager, I've always been much into technology and I even started in programming. So I love technology and how we can use that to increase guest happiness. Uh, So that is about it for me. But I've been a manager for a few companies here in tourism. So, but now as a consultant from the other side. My name is Frederik Arnason. I've been in tourism since 1991, so more than 33 years now, running hotels and guest houses and travel agencies and car rentals and adventure companies. I've been here in Bredelsvik running this hotel since 2009, so total 15 years. The hotel is with 36 rooms. It's a boutique hotel on the countryside of Iceland. And yes, that's about it. So how did you end up working together and what was the digital challenges you wanted to solve, Frederick? Well, we started this process through, I mean, we wanted to do some digitalization in our hotel, like digital locks and self-service check-in and things like that. And we started working with a company in Reykjavik doing these processes. But then we found out on the middle of the way that that was not what they were into doing. So that's when we started to work with Allah with Proactive Iceland to, to finish this work. That's how we started to work together. So your objective in your hotel is to digitalize the customer journey through digital check-in and digital locks? Yes, and self-service like uh, honesty bar, information about tours in the area, uh, upsell, all kinds of upsell. So make it more like a better experience for the guests. That was the main goal. And for example, is it through an application? They can find information about activities in the area. What is the format of your digitalization? We do not use apps. We have a website. We send out, for example, if the guest goes into our website or on booking.com or Expedia or whatever channel he decided to book, 
when the digitalization starts afterwards that, they will come automatic emails with information about the area. And then comes another email with upsell, what to do, what tours they can use. Then we are connected to a company called Tourdesk. Then the guests receive an email. In these emails, there are information how to check in, how to check out, information about what possibilities to do at the hotel, like the dinner options and spa and et cetera. Yeah, this is the main thing. But the main goal with this was to save, of course, make the guest experience better and also at the same time save labor cost. And today, so you start your digital journey thanks to the Tobit grant. And today, where are you in your digital journey? Yes, we started after we, it was actually, we wanted to do this all the time, but then we went to the Turpit grant and that's pushed us to continue to that. And we are like uh, more than halfway through. We have all the locks installed. We have the emails are ready. The upsell items are about to be ready. So actually next step or within a few days, maybe two, three weeks, we will finish all the work and, and push play on all this stuff. Well done. <laughs> and how did you do to prioritize? Because you are working on logs, you are working on automation email, on upsell items. How did you do to say that you're going to start with this and then with that? What was your roadmap? Well, we started to, because we, we knew in the beginning that we needed to do some self-service check-in. To begin with, we found out okay, we need to save labor costs. That was the main goal to begin with. because. When people are checking in, some people come late. So after the opening hours of the restaurant, we were sometimes just waiting a long time for some few guests, two, three, four guests to come. And this, then was a, somebody working on the front desk or at the restaurant, waiting maybe two, three hours for the last, latest guest. So the first step was to figure out how can we install some automatic locks for the door with key code or whatever we can use. That was the first step. And then the next step was the emails, how we can get this information to the guest in time, because it's also a challenge in Iceland. Many people, for example, from the United States, they turn off their mobile network because it's too expensive for them to use. It's not, this, not like us in Europe, we have this roaming contract that cost the same everywhere we are. So that was also a challenge. How can we get the information to the guest at the correct time so, it's, so he's able to see it? That was the next step. And then the third step is about the upsell. How we can we actually use this technology to make more turnover and more value out of it? And I know that you have encountered some challenges. Maybe, Allah, you can tell us more because your journey was not peaceful. You had up and down. And it's also really interesting to know the down, to learn from your experience. Yeah. And this is like because of our main service provider saw that this wasn't their core business. That's why I came in and, and I've been connecting companies and Frederick and creating the journey as well. So we've been manually testing this a little bit because we wanted to see where the hiccups are and what the challenges have been. And for example, people have locked themselves out of the room because three failed attempts to put in their code and also, we've had challenges in regards to the checkout, as we didn't think about like when the maid needs to go into the cleaning the room, we need to know about the checkout time. But when guests returned the key to the reception, we knew that they were out at eight o'clock so that they could go in straight away. But now we need to have a paper or form at the reception so people click check when they have checked out. So we know when what room can be cleaned straight away. So, And we are still looking into some of the challenges, like when people lock themselves out after three failed attempts, what we can do. Is there kind of a master code? Is there a fingerprint or something in our digital locks that can help? Because it's uh, 120 seconds that people cannot do anything with a lock. That can be a long time for people. So... And uh, we're still in the process and we're still doing this manually at the moment, but we're pushing play at the moment. So straight away after Easter, we'll pushing play and hoping that this will be going better. But we have been creating instructions as well on how to check in, like how to push a keypad so the lights go on. And we've also like in the process that 
we wanted to create a form on our website that people can attach the photo of their passport. That's also been a little bit of a challenge that, you know, all forms cannot accept that. But we've been creating better instructions. So it's been good to take this slowly and do this in the off season. Now the high season is approaching, so we will be ready for that time. But what my word of warning or advice for people is not to be afraid to ask questions when you're getting a partner or a service provider to do an implementation or a project for you is to ask questions like, have you done this implementation before? How did it go? Were there any complications? So, for example, we did not know all the things that we needed to know. For example, we need to subscribe to a program for 150 euros a month with the digital locks. So there is a a few costs that is extra, but we are really grateful for the grant that Turbit had, uh, which made us start this project, you know, although it was a little bit of a dream for, from Frederick to do this customer journey with a digital station. So, but we've seen that people have been booking tours in the neighborhood. They have been clicking the links because we have the links in the customer journey email. We have tracks on them. So we can track that three people have clicked on this link and we see that 10 people have bought this tour. So. That's also good information that we are getting out of this. Thank you for sharing your experience. And what you said is really important to keep in mind that innovation is a journey and you have to be ready to face challenges, to also overcome maybe sometimes disappointment and find solution to satisfy the client while you are testing what you're doing. And it's sometimes fake it until you make it. We often say that in the startup environments, but uh, I think it's interesting to see that is not always what we see in LinkedIn. Like you make things happening like that and it's easy. No, it's not easy and people have to be aware of that. But at the end, it's working. So it's worth the journey. Exactly. And that's one of the things you can get really frustrated with technology when it's not working or you feel like it's not working when you need to fine tune it a little bit here and there for it to work. So it is a journey, (laughs) but in the end, we're like always hoping that it will be more successful. And I think it will come down to that. The customer happiness, the the guest happiness will be increasing with this journey. And then as well from COVID and everything, like people want contactless service or processes that they don't need to meet persons, they don't need to touch or to go to, you know. So some people would like that. And I find it actually strange, but according to customer happiness scores, often the most happiest customers are the ones that are in self-service because then they don't need to wait or they can just take care of themselves without waiting or being in contact with anyone else. However, this journey as well gives our employees better time to spend, to talk to the customers, to give them advice on what to do in the area and chat and where they have been and where they're going and and show interest in our guests. So that's actually really great as well. And I think to remain competitive, you have to go digitalize. You have to find solution to be contactless, as you said, because also people are changing, habits are changing. But I am wondering, I have a personal experience. I was in a hostel in Ireland and everything was contactless. I didn't meet anyone from the hostel. And at first, I didn't even know how to open the door because I didn't see that on the application I I received the code and so on. And I I felt even if I am young and I know internet and I, I know how to be digitalized, at first, it was not in my habit. So it's really interesting the survey you just mentioned, because maybe sometimes you can feel a gap between some customers. And I'm thinking also to the elderly people. Did you have feedback from these kind of customers with the digital logs, for example? What is your experience with this kind of customer? We've not made like a formal survey at the moment because we've been just with our off season and we've had three groups a week. However, we've noticed that even elderly people, because we're a small hotel here, 
we notice that they go into the hall and we sometimes listen after if there comes the error message because the lock gets like unlocked. So you can hear if there is an error message. And surprisingly, elderly people as well do not have trouble. And if we have the instructions, so we've been fine tuning the instructions and all of our messaging as well. So as soon as we are really clear and concise on, on how to say it, and then we've not been having trouble. So that's good to know. Everyone can manage this and have skills also to go through your tools. Would you have any best practice and key learning you can share with the people that are listening? Maybe, Frederick, you can share first. I think it's just don't be afraid of it. Just start with the journey because I think this is, it is the future. This is what people want. So don't be afraid. It's a little bit of investment and just make a plan how you see it, map it up, how you want to look at it at the end and then the begin on the other end. It makes everything easier when it's done. From the business point of view, it is a labor cost savings. And that's something that people should think about because labor cost is always getting higher and higher and higher. And talking about your team, did you feel any resistance from your employees to use the digital tools and processes you put in place? The staff is with us in it. And actually, they are quite happy with it. And they've been helping us a lot to bring up ideas how we can do this and do that and stuff like that and we are not resigning any staff not at all it's not about that it's, it's a question about how we can use their time as well better for example this winter we have to implemented a robot to clean the floors and that's part of the digitalization if it's not a journey for the guests but it's also for the staff then the staff can use their time more to talk to the guests at the bar or, or telling them what to do around so it's it's also a question about how we can use the staff better for more sufficient jobs. Thank you for sharing. And Ayla, same question. Do you have any key learnings and best practices you can share with us? I agree with Frederick that just start and ask the questions, like I mentioned earlier, difficult questions, to try to have the process as, as good as possible to decrease all the hiccups or challenges that you can face. Although like we created a plan, like phase one, phase two, three, four, we've been going back sometimes from phase three, four up to phase one. So it is often with a startup or implementing things, it, you need sometimes to go two steps back and two steps forward. And it's a process. Be patient and talk it out if you're frustrated, because sometimes it's really frustrating like when technology is not working as it should or you don't want but i totally recommend people going this way like both of you said it's the way of the future and we believe that uh guest happiness will increase but yeah i think it's also one thing that is to map out your what you can measure from this maybe in the beginning so measure some happiness score. Were you selling some tours before? Were you booking this or is it like, and also maybe employee happiness. You can maybe put down some measurement that you would like to measure throughout this. And for example, what's your goal in this? Is it to, for example, that everyone clicks on this link? So I think what we would have done probably a little bit earlier is to put that down that would have been great but but we're almost to the end so it's it's a, it's been quite a journey and, and i totally recommend that people go into this how do you plan to measure employee and customer happiness do you have any idea that throughout we have a program or a partner called hr monitor where we can measure monthly employee happiness so we can see where they are at. And then we are using SurveyMonkey as well for customer happiness. But we're also always monitoring our reviews. And our reviews, since this process started, have been only 9 and 10. So we've been quite lucky. Like people have not mentioned this at all, though, in the comments. But they have been really happy with the stay here at Hotel Bretasik. 
maybe they did not even figure out that it was brand new in your hotel and they thought it was like that forever. <laughs> so it's proven you have done a really great job. And about the automation with your email, do you have a tool you can share with us you are using to automate email? We use, to do automate email, we use our PMS system, Do. It's through that system. It's a format we use in that system to send automatic emails. For the travelers that would like to know more about your hotel and maybe uh, stay at your place, Frederick, where can we redirect them? It's just our website, pretelsweek.is. Yeah, that's our website and, and all the information about us are on our website. Perfect. And Ala, if we have an hotel that is interesting in having some of your experience to help them become more digitalized, where they can reach out to you? My website is uh, proactiveiceland.com. Perfect. And you're working mainly in Iceland or do you work also in other countries? In one other country, but yeah, mainly in Iceland. But like this and, and many other things, it's so easy now to be online and meet once in a while. So it's been going well. It's great. Perfect. Do you want to share anything else? Just to emphasize, ask questions so you know all the things, what you're going into. I can't emphasize enough about that. And don't be afraid to buy the robot also to mop and vacuum the floors. It's so great. That's one of the tasks that employees don't like. And it's a, it's a difficult task as well. So it's all kinds of things like how can we improve? What can we do? And to increase customer and, and employee happiness and just create a better journey for everyone. And that's one of the things that we've been doing. Like we want everybody that comes to visit Iceland to be happier with their tour and trip. Well, that certainly sounded like a very challenging process. So Marie, what would your one key thing be that stood out for you in this interview? Yeah, if I had only one thing to remember is you don't have to be afraid to start your digitalization journey. And most importantly, ask questions. Make sure the service provider you are working with understand what you want, what you need, and there is no stupid questions. Always ask questions, make sure they understand, and then go for it. That's really great advice. So let's, with that, head over to our five key takeaways. What are our five key takeaways from this episode? Well, number one, contactless solutions are rich in opportunity. In this episode, we heard how the hotel introduced digital locks and self-service check-in systems. These innovations not only help to streamline the guest experience, making it more autonomous, but also freeing up staff time to focus on offering a more personal experience, they also reduced their workload. They also had the potential to provide rich data on customer behavior, such as time spent in or out of the room, and different patterns that could be witnessed between different segments and seasons. Number two, adopt an end-to-end -end communication strategy. Our guests today developed an end-to-end -end strategy that keeps guests informed and engaged from the moment they book until the moment they depart, enhancing the overall guest experience. It's important here to try and ensure we have ownership of that customer data, something that can be challenging when reliant on OTAs, and that we escalate a smart, automated communication series from the very beginning to the very end, creating many opportunities along the way. Number three, automate your upselling. Choose the technology you use carefully, or why not set up workflows yourself? In this episode, we heard how automated systems offer guests additional services at key stages along the journey, which helps increase hotel revenue and, of course, also provides guests convenience. For hotels looking to earn ancillary revenue, this is a golden opportunity to increase revenue beyond the average daily rate charged per room. Number four, remain agile and adapt to challenges. Implementing new technologies always comes with challenges, including making these fit with guests' needs and also troubleshooting tech issues, which can be stressful and time-consuming. 
While these challenges can be frustrating, the long-term benefits and improved efficiency, as well as the guest satisfaction improvements, are undeniable. And once achieved, they're usually considered well worth the effort. Number five, continuous improvement is something to always keep in mind. Alla and Friedrich emphasized the importance of ongoing adjustments and improvements in digital systems to ensure they meet the needs of both guests and staff effectively. Whilst it can be tempting to see transformation as an all-out digital upgrade, the truth is that those succeeding with technology are implementing it iteratively and sometimes the best innovations simply cannot be seen as they're invisible, but very much present. With that sound advice, we hope you feel inspired and empowered to tackle your own digital transformation journey and not to shy away from the challenges that you may face along the way. You've been listening to Tour Tech. That's a wrap for another week. If you liked today's episode, be sure to leave a review and share amongst your networks across social. These two small actions make a really big difference. We appreciate the time you take to listen and, of course, to share. Make sure you don't miss future episodes. New episodes are released every Monday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all major podcasting platforms. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and get your podcasts every week in your inbox. Torbit is a partnership co-funded by the European Commission's Cosme program for small and medium-sized enterprises, and it's led by an incredible team of partners who are all as passionate about what they do as the businesses they're supporting. This includes the Catalan Tourist Board, Barcelona Chamber of Commerce, Paris & Co, Tourism 4.0 in Slovenia, Hub Brussels, Iceland's Tourism Cluster, the Lapland University of Applied Sciences, and NEST, the Tourism Innovation Center in Portugal. On behalf of these incredible partners at Torbit and the European Commission, and of course here at the Digital Tourism Think Tank, thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next week.